Welcome back, Eric Roberts, Music City Trader. We're uh, looking at the double crossover, and this is a more advanced uh, anal analysis of a chart where I lost a bid, but I saw where I would have won the bid, and I'm gonna show you this because these are the kind of entry points that I think make you a better trader. So you already kind of know the double crossover method from learning through the course th through here, but um, here's here's where I put my bid. My bid was right here. Um, it was It's kind of hard to see on this sheet, but it's right there. Um, you can see where it was uh, right here, and it was an up bid. And it really was a bad entry because if you look at this, you can kind of see there was really no, really no cross in the stochastic. The stochastic kind of crossed up, and I even wrote that it kind of crossed up, and the MACD didn't cross, the MACD was just headed up. Somewhere in my head during these sessions, I started thinking, well, if the MACD is headed up, then it's okay even if it doesn't cross up. The Why I think that doesn't work is because there is no momentum. It's just heading up. It doesn't mean anything. It could be going down and then up and down and up, but the MACD can be headed up for a long time as it was here. It was headed up from all the way up here, headed up, headed up, and it was just flat across because you have a downtrend, you have, you're underneath the long average, you got this going up, and this is basically consolidation happening and because there's warring indicators in a massive way. So what I thought was, well, it's going up and this is kind of going up. And I took a bid here when, let's see, why would I have done that? I think maybe because I thought this would be a cross. I, I don't know. I still think I just wasn't thinking at this point. Um, or maybe I was just trying to uh, push a trend. I think this looks more like, oh, it's crossing through. It's trending up. Let's push this trend up. It did not work. But I did look at this and realized that this would have been a pretty big win. And uh, you got MACD uh, still heading up. You've got stochastic crossed up from oversold uh, right here. And this, any of these entries for the for those three minutes or four minutes would have been a win as it's crossing up. So you, you've got to see that this would have been the win right here. It crossed up even though this didn't cross. So my my theory was kind of working. It crossed the stochastic up. The MACD was already heading up. It kind of, it didn't cross cross, but it didn't, it didn't not cross. It kind of cricked down and went up. So that almost seems like a cross to me. It's uh, if I'm just trying to, uh, trying to see a cross. In live bidding though, when this is happening, it's really hard to know if this is a cross or not because it's not crossed yet. And it, you know, it might have crossed down. It looked like it was going to cross down, d doesn't it? If it would have continued on its line there, it would have crossed down. This would have crossed up, would have been a bad entry, but um, this would have been a better entry. Th th this is what I'm, I'm going to show you one more poor entry on this chart, which is right here. You have the stochastic crossing clearly out of overbought. Boom, it's tanking down, okay? And so you might think if you were just basing this on the long average going down and the stochastic going down, that man, you could win this trade. But, and this is how it happens every time, you lose, you would lose this trade because the MACD is clearly going up. So at this moment, you have what we call consolidation uh, happening in the candles, kind of. They're not moving very much at all. And you have what I call, this is warring indicators or the swirl. Uh, they're swirling because this is like going down, this is going up, like hot air, cold air. You get a little tornado right here. And that's what you get just straight away. Everything's converged together. This is going down, this is going up and you really don't want to bid like this. The only way I would have taken this bid is if this would have cricked and chased down and this would have been a this would have been an entry point then that I could have taken. Still though, the MACD was not quite overbought enough. It wasn't up here. It was way down here, just moving up so slightly. So these are just some entries and not entries that you would take on a chart. I took a very bad bad entry point here and I think I was just I think what I was thinking is this is going up, this is going up, this is crossing through, I'm going to do a trend push. This is what trend pushing looks like, and I do lose a lot on trend pushing. And, and, and really, my trend pushing has not worked as much lately. I don't do trend pushing. Uh, I Actually, I like trend pushing. In other words, finding it going up and go, yeah, it's going up, so I'm going to take it up. The only problem is trend pushing does this exact thing right here to me a lot, and especially lately. So what happened was here, I saw this, this chart was going up. And I was like, oh, look, it's going up. And then it goes down, it goes up, it goes down a couple, goes up. It went down a little bit. And I took an up bid thinking that I'm well above, I'm spread apart, which is what I use in trend pushing. I'm up above here. I'm spread up here. All my indicators right here told me this is going up. I took a three minute bid because I wanted to just give it some chance to keep rising. And then it flips down. 
This happens to me all the time lately. As I'm working in double cross, I, I still try to flex the little muscle of the trend push, which I really like trend pushing. And I've won a lot of candles, a lot of bids doing one minute trend pushing where I just, I find these crossover points going up and I just like, I could win. You look at this and think if you were doing up bids here, you could have won 15 bids on the way up of that chart. So I've spent a lot of time trend pushing and, and won a lot. But what I've found is it sort of starts to fail me. And when I'm, when I'm doing a method where I'm only going four deep, it's extremely dangerous because you can't really push a trend. Uh, with only four deep, you just you just can't do it. You you can only you you psych yourself out. You can only go four deep, and uh, you know really when I'm trend pushing, I want at least eight deep. In other words, I want to be able to guess eight times. So if this turns around a little bit, I want to be able to like okay, go back down with it, go back up with it, go back you know do it. But that's that's different than the double crossover method that uh, that I'm teaching you in this course, which is what I think is the most uh, clear method that you can get good at. Trend pushing is fun, but uh, unless you can go really deep, unless you're really really kind of honed in with the charts. In other words, when I say honed in with the charts, unless you have spent hundreds of hours bidding and just looking at charts for hundreds or thousands of hours, you know, months and months and months, you start to get a sense for what a trend push would do. If you, as you see a trend setting up, you can kind of go with it. But uh, the biggest problem I have with trend pushing right now in my own personal bidding strategy is I can hardly tell when it's going to turn around. And that's when you start to lose. So no matter how many you went on the way up, if you're not deep enough on the way down to, 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 to realize, oh, it's stopping, uh, you could be three, four, five deep before you realize, oh, I'm kind of you know, and then you're consolidating and then, you know, you're just not sure where it's going next. And now you got to start over, but you're already five deep. So be careful uh, out there bidding. And if you're going to use the double crossover, you can use the double crossover and the fakie double crossover. Both of those seem to work very well.